Okay, here we've got a IRR question from our Court 5 midterm, and there's two different ways to run this. Um, we can actually do it just solely using the calculator, but we can also set up the algebra to see what we're actually doing. So I'm going to set up the algebra, and then we'll talk at the end about how to do this in an even quicker way uh, using the calculator. So here we have a set of predicted cash flows, but we don't know what's going to happen in year three. Investors are basically telling us that we can go ahead with the project if we're going to get at least a 13% IRR um, internal rate of return on the project. Keep in mind that as soon as we hear IRR, that means that at that rate, so 13% in this case, NPV equals zero. We always want to remember that. That's the definition of what internal rate of return is. And this is a very practical thing that investors will say, well, if it's going to earn 13%, at least we can go ahead and do the project. So let's do our regular NPV calculation and just set these cash flows to uh, set the NPV to zero, um, and then we should be able to find our unknown year three cash flow. So NPV is just the present value of each cash cash flow discounted back to today. So I'm setting that to zero. That will be negative 3,500. No discount needed there because it happens in year one. Plus a thousand. That's a, that's a positive cash flow, so we start making money after the initial investment of negative 3,500. So we discount this back one year at 13%. Again, the reason we're using 13% for our discount rate is because we set our MPV to zero, which is implying your internal rate of return. Uh, plus 1250, that has to come back two years, so 1.13 to the power of two plus our third year, we'll call it X, because we don't know what that is, but whatever it is, it'll be discounted back three years, plus 1150 discounted back four years. Great. Now we can see there's only one variable, zero on one side of the equation. We can calculate the rest of this in our calculator and move it to the other side. So I'm going to leave X over 1.13 to the power of three on this side move everything else to the other side. So I get 3,500 minus 1,000 over 1.13 minus 1,250 over 1.13 squared minus 1,150 over 1.13 to the power of 4. Toss that all in the calculator and what do we get? We get 900 930.79. Again, I'm rounding on paper here, but keeping the full answer in my calculator. So that means our discounted cash flow from year three has to equal 930 bucks and 80 cents, 79 cents, um, in order for this to work out with an MPV of zero when we're using 13% as the discount rate. So our final algebra step here is just to multiply both sides by 1.13 to the power of three. And we get x equals 1343 dollars and four cents. So that has to be the actual cash flow in year three, so that it'll get discounted back to 930.79, and that'll all work into a um, IRR of exactly 13% because that would make our MPV zero at 13%. This means that uh, year three's cash flow has to be at least this amount. If it's more than that amount, it's going to be a positive cash flow, so that will only increase the internal rate of return. So the answer is at least this. We would want the internal rate of return to be 13% or higher because this is a finance, uh, this is an investing project. Sorry. We know that because it's a negative cash flow in time zero. So we want a minimum IRR of 13% or a higher one. In other words, 13% is basically the hurdle rate that the investors set. So this is the way, this is how we show the algebra actually works. The faster way, the, set, the calculator way, is to dump all of these cash flows in to your uh, cash flow section in your calculator, including a cash flow of zero in year three. Then we calculate the NPV and set the interest rate for which we're calculating that MPV to, to 13%. When we do that, you're going to get a negative $930.79 NPV. 
And what we want is, well, we don't want it to be negative. We want it to be zero. So that means we need a positive $930 from our third year cash flow being discounted. So it essentially would get us to this point here just by doing the NPV calculation with a zero in there. Roll that $930 forward three years, which is what we did here anyways, and we would have gotten back to 1343 So I like that we showed it this way because that's really what we're doing algebraically. We're setting the MPV to zero. But if we just calculate the MPV in our calculator with these cash flows, a cash flow of zero in year three, and calculate MPV using the internal rate of return that's provided, then you roll, the, roll that uh, MPV forward to, uh, to whatever year we need. So hopefully those two um, methods are pretty straightforward. I think this is a really realistic type question, and if you have any other questions or comments on it, feel free to let us know, info at arnoldtutoring.com. Thanks.